Hi, good day. This is uh, Justin Pineda, and for this session, we'll be uh, discussing about process scheduling. So this is the module two of IT001, Advanced Operating Systems. So uh, for this module, we'll be discussing different algorithms um, for process scheduling. So we have first come first serve, uh, shortest job first, non-preemptive, shortest job first preemptive, round robin and highest response ratio next and these are our primary resources the copies of these ebooks and other reading materials are uploaded in the google drive okay so um, let's go to introduction to process scheduling so just a review if you would remember there are three states uh, transition states for task execution so we mentioned that there's uh, when a task is generated there's a registration and it will be um, sent to the ready queue and it will be in the ready state and then once it is dispatched it will run and it's either there will be a preemption okay wherein another process will have to go in or there is a what we call an IO operation or interruption and then it will go again to the ready queue and then it will be dispatched again to the to the running state until the process is finished and it will be terminated so remember these states because um, this will be used in our study of the different process scheduling algorithms <clears throat> so some definition of terms so when we say process, it's a program in execution. So if you load the taskbar, you will see a lot of processes. These are programs that are in execution. So the states it is ready, running, waiting. <clears throat> Sometimes waiting state is called the black state. Okay. <clears throat> Third, all processes reside in the ready state. Okay. Particularly in the ready queue. We will call it ready queue or RQ prior to its execution. And then context switching happens when a process is switched from ready to the running state or vice versa. So when there's an interruption or when there's another um, process that will go in, there will be a context switch. Next, all process in the ready state reside in the memory or the RAM and a running process is found in the processor <clears throat> so uh, these are our terms for this uh, module now for the process scheduling terms so we have um, um, a lot of terms for this we have arrival time or AT is the time when the process reaches the ready queue so <clears throat> Usually, um, different process arrive at certain certain moments in time. So we call it arrival time. Okay, and then we have burst time or the service time, which is called BT, is the total execution or service time of a process. <clears throat> the third is the turnaround time or the TAT, is the total time from the time of process arrives in the ready queue until it finishes its execution okay next is the waiting time it's the total wait time before the process gets executed so not all processes um, are executed uh, at the time that it arrives in the ready queue so some processes have to wait <clears throat> next is the time quantum it is the or the tq it's the time given to a process to execute before switching to the next process so some um, algorithms will require a time quantum and so that will uh, provide this fairness some some say it's fairness for um, processes to be given equal amounts of time to execute um, response ratio or rr2 is the value computed to determine the balance between processes based on 
arrival time and burst time. So this is used for a specific algorithm, which we will discuss later. <clears throat> Next is the start time or ST is the time when process starts executing and the completed time or CT is the time when the process finishes executing. So remember these terms, this will be used when you build your performance table. So your requirements that you need to show <coughs> is your obviously your solution. Okay, so by default, you are required to show the following in all algorithms that will be discussed. Number one will be the summation of the burst time. So this is the easiest one because you will just add all the burst times or service times of all processes. Okay, so summation BT or sigma BT is the total burst time of all processes in the process table. So just add it all up and then you get the burst time. Uh, second is the gun chart, which is 60%. This shows the order of the execution of processes with its time. So <clears throat> you will show the timeline and then you will uh, show the processes and the specific um, time when it starts and uh, when it ends. The third is the performance table. Okay? That is 30%. It, it is... Uh, um, the table wherein you will show the turnaround time and the waiting time for the processes. Okay. <clears throat> Note that the Gantt chart is the most important requirement. A correct Gantt chart is a prerequisite of a correct performance table. So definitely, if the Gantt chart is incorrect, your performance table is incorrect. <clears throat> so, uh, for our uh, example, we're going to use this process table. So it has four processes, namely P1, P2, P3, P4. Although in the real world, it, this will be a process ID and the process name. So probably there's a uh, notepad. Um, P1 can be notepad, P2 can be Chrome, P3 can be um, paint, P4 can be Minesweeper, the game. So that, that that can be the representation of this process. Okay. So note that the summation of the burst time is always the same regardless of the algorithm use. So there's um, an arrival time. This will be given to you so for all the process and the burst time, the service time for all. And then, obviously, the first thing that you will do is you will get the, the total of the burst time. So you get 10 points, 10 points already. So here we have burst time of 10, 6, 4, and 1 respectively. So we get total of uh, we get a total of 21 um, in the summation BT. Okay. So let's go to the first algorithm, first come first serve. Okay. So now let's go to the quick facts okay, for the first come first serve. Now the criteria criteria or criterion will be the basis of the algorithm in determining which process will execute. And in first come first serve, the criterion is just the arrival time. So if you, um, if the process um, has an earlier arrival time, then it will be executed first, okay? So the first process to arrive gets executed first. The mode is non-preemptive, so when we say non-preemptive, the process has to finish. Okay, it cannot be interrupted. Okay. Advantages is simple to implement because it's straightforward. So the disadvantage would be the first process to arrive. Does that mean that it's the important process? So it's possible that um, the important process uh, is the fourth one um, that arrives. You know? Short important process that arrive in a later time will not be executed until the early process gets finished. So if the early process is very long, then a problem arises. Okay, so that would be uh, that would be a no-brainer. So um, a long process that arrives in first, then um, it will take time for the other process to execute. So exceptions, so if two or more pass of the same arrival time, choose the first given the question. So usually 
um, this is just for the for the exercise and simulation. So if process one and process two um, both arrive at time one, then process one will be executed first. Okay, so simulation. So we have four pass again with arrival times of two, three, four, five respectively. Okay. So here. Um, this is uh, a glimpse of the or a snapshot of the uh, gun chart. So from time zero to time two, okay, the um, the processor is idle okay, because there's no process being executed. So the first process P1 will be executed at time two. Okay. So at time two. Uh, process one will be executed with a burst time of 10. So this is using first come first serve. So, so 2 plus 10, 12. So it will run from time 2 to time 12. Okay, and then the, the third one that will be executed will be P2 because the arrival time is um, 3. So, um, okay, so process one um, is already done. So we will execute. Uh, process 2 with a burst time of 6. So from time 12, okay, with a burst time of 6, so plus 6, that would be eight, 18. So from time 12 to time 18, P2 will be executed. Okay, and then it's done. So P3 with a burst time of 4. So from time 18, plus 4, time 22, okay, P3 will be executed. Okay, and then last would be process 4 with a burst time of 1. So therefore the um, the the process uh, the fourth process or P4 will be executed from time 22 to 23. Okay, so that is the entire um, Gantt chart. Now let's show the performance table. So here you will list down the um, arrival time the start time when it's executed, the completed time um, when the process finishes the execution, and then we showed the turnaround time and the waiting time. So here, uh, there's a formula. For example, turnaround time it's computed by uh, subtracting um, the arrival time from the complete time or completed time, and then uh, waiting time is um, solved by subtracting the burst time from the turnaround time. So um, it's straightforward. So we get um, turnaround time of a total of 61 okay, and a waiting time of a total of uh, 40. So it's quite long. Uh, so it means that um, because we see that the the, the burst time of the first process is quite long, then the waiting time for the others will be longer. Okay, so it means it's not optimized. Okay, so that is the, so it highlighted the disadvantage of first come first serve. So now let's go to the second um, algorithm, shortest job first, non-preemptive or SJF NP. So quick facts, so here the criterion is the burst time. So the burst time or the service time, meaning if um, <clears throat> if the there are multiple processes in the ready queue, the one with the lowest burst time will be executed first. So description if two or more processes are in the ready queue, choose the one that has the lowest burst time and execute until completion. Because it's not preemptive cannot interrupt it or disrupt it. So it has to complete uh, its, its um, um, processing time. So the advantage is it's efficient. Okay, disadvantages, uh, so there will be starvation. Um, so starvation is defined as when you have long processes, it will always be the last to be executed. Okay, so um, if there are multiple processes with um, 
with small burst times, then definitely they will be executed first. Okay. And then second would be it's hypothetical. So unless you are executing batch files, you cannot predict the burst time of the process. So definitely we cannot predict. So you can run um, face, um, your Facebook in a web browser, but we cannot predict how long you'll be using that. So that's why it's hypothetical. So exceptions, so if two or more parts have the same burst time, choose the one, choose the first one given in the question. Okay. So let's simulate again. So this is SJF NP or non -prem -prem team. No? So same process. Okay, so for 0 to 2, time 0 to 2, it is idle. Okay, and then at time 2, only process 1 is in the ready queue. So it will be executed. <clears throat> so because it's non preemptive, it has to finish. So from time 2 to time 12, P1 will be executed. And at time 12, all processes are already in the ready queue. Okay, so from uh, so process two, process three, and process four are, are already in the ready queue. So which process will be executed next? Definitely the one with the the lowest burst time, which is P4. Okay, so P4 with a burst time of one. So from time 12 to 13, P4 will be executed. Next would be process three. Okay, so with a burst time of four. Okay, uh, from time 13 to 17, P3 will be executed, and then P2 will be executed last with a burst time of 6. So from time 17 to 23, P2 will be executed. Okay, now um, let, let's check the performance table. Okay, so um, as you can see, the turnaround time, the total turnaround time is way um smaller compared to the first come first serve so the turnaround time is 51 and the total waiting time is 30. Okay. so this is sjf np and now let's go to the third algorithm uh, which is shortest job first preemptive or sjf p so this is similar to um to uh sjf and p but there is um a twist so the criterion is still the burst time okay uh, but here if two or more process are in the ready queue choose the one that has the lowest burst time and execute until completion okay so that's that is the um, for non preemptive. But uh, uh, if the process enters the ready queue, so this is the, um, the twist. So if a process enters the ready queue with, uh, sorry, while another process is in execution, compare the burst time of both processes. If the burst time of the former is lower than the latter, preempt. Otherwise, the process in execution will continue to execute. So check. So at, at the time when in another process will be in the ready queue, you have to compare okay, the burst time. Okay, if the, the process in the ready queue is smaller, then it will have to be um, executed and there will be preemption. Okay, so... We'll see this in the simulation. So the mode is preemptive, advantage is efficient, same. Okay. So let's see. <clears throat> so let's try to simulate P1, P2, P3, P4. So again, um, from 0 to 2, time 0 to 2, this idle. Okay. Now, let's see. At time 2, process 1 goes in to the ready queue, so we execute process 1. But at time 3, process 2 uh, goes into the ready queue. Now, at this point, 
we see that the burst time of process 2 is smaller than process 1. So we have to preempt. So, okay. The burst time at time 3 is 9 for process 1. And then for process 2, okay, it's 6. So okay, we have to preempt. So execute. At time 4, process 3 goes into the ready queue. And here, we compare now the burst time. Now again, the burst time of process 3 is smaller than the burst time of process 2. So we have to preempt. Okay. So we preempt. So it's 5 versus 4. Okay. So we execute process 3 at time 4 to time 5. Now at time 5, process 4 goes into the ready queue. And now we have to compare. So we have um, a burst time of 1 for process 4. So definitely it's smaller. So we have to preempt. Okay, so from time 5 to 5, uh, from time 5 to time 6, uh, process 4 is executed. And then it's done. It's finished. So we go back to the one with the smallest burst time. In this case, it's process 3. So we let process 3 finish executing okay, um, from time 6 to time 9. And then we execute process 2 from time 9 to time 14. And then lastly, we execute process 1 from time 15. Uh, sorry, from time 14 to time 23. So there are a lot of preemptions, context switching, okay? Um, but here we can see that we are preempting the one, the ones that have uh, a lower burst time or service time. So showing the performance table, is, uh, as you can see, this even the, the total turnaround time and the total waiting time are way, way um, lesser. Than, do, than those of the first come first serve and SJF NP um, algorithms. Okay, so this is for um, SJF MT. Okay. Now let's go to the third, <clears throat> uh, sorry, to the fourth uh, algorithm. We call it round robin um, algorithm. So here. <clears throat> Um, so the criteria here, so we have a lot of criteria. Right? So the first one is the arrival time. Um, the second is the order in the ready queue and the time quantum. So this is where TQ goes in. So in the description, so the first process in the ready queue is executed based on the time quantum. So the time quantum is fixed. The mode is preemptive, so we have to stop and allow the other process to execute after the given time quantum. So advantages, it gives equal time sharing to each process. So what are the disadvantages? So if the time quantum is very small, there will be a lot of context switching. And if the time quantum is very big, it will become first come first serve. Okay, so it has to be balanced. So, so exceptions, if two or more processes have the same arrival time, choose the first given the question. Okay. So additional requirements, if you are asked to compute for the um, um, for the uh, round robin algorithm, show the order of processes in the um, ready queue. Okay. And here's a note. Even if it's the only process remaining, you need to show the execution based on time quantum. You do not railroad the execution. Okay. <clears throat> so, there. Now, let's try to simulate. Again, um, the time quantum here is 4. Okay. So, this will be used for all <laughs> um, processes. 
So again, from time 0 to time 2, it's idle. Now at time 2, okay, process 1 goes into the ready queue. And then we have uh, a time quantum of 4. So from time 2 plus 4, that is 6. So time 2 to time 6, process 1 will be executed. And then... Um, by the time, uh, by time six, all processes are already in the um, in the ready queue. So we will now execute process two with a time quantum of four. So from time six to time ten, process two will be executed. <laughs> so there. Um, now after that. P3, process 3 will be executed okay, with a time quantum of 4. So it will, the entire process will be executed. <laughs> so from time 10 to time 14, P3 will be executed. And then we execute, so it's already done. And then we execute P4 with a burst time of 1. So in this case, will not um, the time quantum will not be maximized. So we only have burst time of 1. So time 40 to time 15, we execute P4. And then we go back to P1. So we execute P1 for uh, time quantum of 4. So from time 15, so plus 4, it's 19. So time 15 to 19, P1 will be executed. Okay, and then we go to P2. Okay, so for P2, we have a burst time of 2 for the remaining. So we execute P2. So from time 19 to 21, uh, P2 will be executed. And then we go back to um, process 1. So, so from time 21, time 23, we have P1. Okay, so looking at the performance table, <coughs> as you can see, uh, the turnaround time is not good. Okay. It's quite big. No? Um, waiting time. Uh, it's average compared to the previous uh, algorithms. Now, you have to show also the order of the ready queue. Okay. So, it's P1, P2, P3, P4, P1, P2, P1. So you have to take note of the um, the order of the processes in the ready queue also. Okay. Now let's go to the last um, last algorithm, which is the highest response ratio next or HRRN. Okay. <clears throat> so quick facts. So the criteria here. Or sorry, the criteria criterion here is the response ratio. Okay, so the goal of the algorithm is to balance between the first come first serve and the shortest job for first algorithms. The algorithm takes into consideration the arrival time and the burst time at the same time. Okay, so the response ratio is computed as W plus S over S where W is X minus T. X meaning the, the current time minus arrival time. Okay. So this is called waiting time so far. And S is the service time or the burst time. So the mode is not preemptive. Okay. So advantages, it's better than shortest job first. There's no star starvation. <coughs> but the disadvantage would be there's too much complexity. Okay. Um, so exceptions, if two or more parts of the same response ratio, choose the first given in the question. And additional requirement for HRRN, you have to show your response ratio computations. Okay. So <coughs> let's try to simulate. So again, P1, P2, P3, P4. So from time 0 to 2, it's idle. Now at time 2, 
um, process 1 goes into the ready queue, so we execute P1. So since HRN is non preemptive, then um, we have to execute the entire process. Now at time 12, all the process are, are already in the ready queue. So we have to compute for the response ratio. So let's check and see how the response ratio is computed. So here, <clears throat> um, how did we arrive with 2.5? Okay, so let's see. So we have 12 is the current time. So we have this is X. X is the current time. So this becomes 12. Okay, this is the current time. 80 is your arrival time. So here, 12 minus arrival time, this is 3. That's why this becomes 3. Okay, plus 6. 6 is the burst time over 6. That's why we get we got uh, 2.5. So we do the same for the other processes. We get the response ratio. So we have 3. And because it's 12 minus 4 is 8. Uh, plus 4, 12 over 4, it becomes 3. And then here we have 12 minus 5, 7, plus 1, 8, 8 over 1, this becomes 8. So you get the one with the highest response ratio. So in this case, we have P4. That's why we execute P4. Okay. So next, at time 13, okay. So we have process 2 and process 3. So again, we have to compute for the response ratio. So we have the, the x here would be 13 minus 3. This becomes 10 plus 6, 16 over 6. This becomes 2.67. And then we have 13 for process 3 minus 4. This becomes 9. 9 plus 4 is um, 13. 13 over 4. This becomes 3.25 so we get the um, we execute the one with the higher response ratio so in this case p3 so we execute p3 from time 13 to time 17 and then we execute p2 last okay so from time 17 to 23 so to summarize the performance table you see um relatively higher turnaround time and low waiting time <clears throat> so these are some of the algorithms for process scheduling so some of the caveats so there are no negative values when you do your performance table um, if you get a negative answer either your sub subtraction or the gun chart is wrong so you have to review again <clears throat> Second, the end time and the summation of the burst time for a process table given will always be the same regardless of the algorithm given. Only the turnaround time and the waiting time will be different. Third is that the summation of the burst time is not always equal to the end time in the Gantt chart. This will differ if the Gantt chart has idle times. So it's not only in the beginning that um, there's a possibility of an idle time. So in the middle, there can also be, a, in the middle of the timeline, there can also be an idle time if there is no process in the ready queue yet. Um, next, so for preemptive um, algorithms, always look for the last completed time when the process finishes executing. Otherwise, it will yield to a negative result. So this is for SJF and round robin so look at the because there will be a lot of preemptions look at the last completed time that's the one that you use for your computation okay next always check the arrival time a lot of uh, the students get confused that they look for a lower burst time in sjf but the process has not arrived yet so it will yield to a negative result so this is what uh um, saying when there is an idle time in the middle of the timeline so this means that the, the process has not arrived yet okay. and last the basis of your performance table is the Gantt chart 
write the process based on the order in the Gantt chart, not based on the process table. So sometimes you'll be given a jumbled, um, jumbled list of process with different arrival times. So probably the arrival time one is uh, at the bottom of the list and the arrival time of 10 will be at the at the top most of the list. So you have to check. Okay. So for your exercise, so this is the um, the process table. So B1, B, uh, P1, P2, P3, P4, P5, P6. Then you have arrival time, burst time. So solve this process table. Um, show using the following algorithms. First come, first serve, SJFNP, SJFP, round robin with a time quantum of 3, and highest response ratio next. So for round robin, show the order of the red queue. For highest response ratio next, show the response ratio for every time when the response ratio is computed. And then put your answers in a spreadsheet and then send to my email to be presented in the next meeting. Okay. So for any questions regarding the process scheduling topics, you may uh, send me an email or put your comments or questions in the comment section. Um, thank you very much and see you in the synchronous session next meeting.